Okay, let's talk about how to set up a buy order with a stop loss uh, using the stop loss techniques here from the step system. So we're going to go in and we're going to set up the stop order. Okay, let's talk about an important concept. Um, Let's talk about a really important concept check here. How to set up a first triggers sequential order where we buy the stock when we get the confirmation, but it also places a stop loss at the same time as we place the order to enter. So we're gonna use those sell stop techniques. We're gonna use one of our core techniques. We'll use that 25 to 50% of the daily ATR below the candlestick low. So we're going to jump over here and I've got a decent little chart set up here on AME. Nice little pullback into a known support resistance zone. So here's our known support resistance zone. We got a beautiful little pullback into there and we're looking for an upward confirmation in price. That uh, means we need to see a green candlestick come in here confirming that the old resistance is in fact becoming new support. And then, you know, that new support zone right there. And we want to put our stop loss below that new support zone. And we'll use um, 25 to 50% of the daily ATR. Now, the ATR is an indicator you can get, you know, in any trading software program out there. It's just add it to a chart and it'll give you a statistic. So if we were to use 50% of the ATR, again, we'd go take the little calculator here and say, okay, well, if our ATR is a buck 34 and I multiply it by 0 0.50 for 50% of the ATR, well, that means my I've got a 67 cent um, cushion between the price I identify as support and where I'm going to put that stop loss. So in this case, the what I think will become support if prices go up and I get triggered, what I think will become support is that doji candle low. Now that may end up changing. You know, if this ends up taking, you know, maybe I get a small green candle in here and, and then I get confirmation. Whatever new low established, we should do. So if we were to look at that, we can again put in the buy stop. We can put in the, the stop loss order down below the, the established low. We'll use 50% of the ATR and we'll do a first triggers uh, sequential order. So we're going to go with the trade here. I'm going to go click on the ask price. I'm going to I'm going to go right click and I'll do buy custom with stop. So buy custom with a stop. Now when I do that, that opens up a ticket with two tickets on it. We got an order to buy and to sell. And we will then go in and say, okay, well, we'll use a buy stop limit to get in to trigger when we get that confirmation. And I need that to go above today's high at a minimum. And, uh, you know, this is one where I might want to look at the chart a little bit closer to figure out my entry criteria. But if I use, oh, you know, 25% of the ATR, that's going to put us around 33 cents or so above the high. So let's go, you know, 10%, we'll go 25% of the ATR above the high. So we'll say, okay, we'll buy at 90.33. So if it goes above 90.33, then we'll say give it another 10% of the ATR above that. So that'd be another 13 cents above that. So we'll say, okay, but don't spend more than 90, um, 66. And that'll be a good trigger and, and filter. And we'll make that order good till canceled. Now, again, this is a first triggers all our first trigger sequential type order. And the first order has to get filled in order for the second order to even exist. And if we're going to use that candle low, which is currently 88.90, we'd want to take the 88.90 and subtract the 67 cents. So we'll go with the um, 88.90 minus the 67 cents just to make our lives easy and say okay we'll put that stop down at 88.23 or lower so we'll set the stop down at 88 oops 0.23 and lower and we'll make that good till canceled now what i need to do is figure out what my exposure to risk is which is 90.66 minus the stop and that's you know ballpark because it's a stop limit or excuse me stop market 
if it or gets triggered, you could end up with a little bit more risk than that. But we're going to base it off of what we know, which is this stock doesn't have a history of gapping if we get triggered. Um, and at this price, it's likely to hit that price and get filled extremely quickly. So let's do the math real quick and figure out what that is. Again, simple arithmetic, 90.66 is the most we'll pay minus the 88.23. That's the stop order. And so that gives us 243 risk. So if I did 100 shares over here, we'd have $243 risk. And I need to make sure that that is appropriate for my asset allocation rule and my risk tolerance rule. So make sure you're not risking more than 1% of the account. So if I, if I didn't want to risk more than $243 plus commissions, then I need to um, use a smaller position size. So if I, you know, if I wanted to keep that risk lower, then what I'd do is I'd come in and say, okay, hey, I'll do that with 50 shares. Now I'm personally okay with a 243. You know, this account, uh, virtual account, particularly has you know plenty of capital to work with and, and position sizing. But you always want a position size to risk. So I'll keep that there. I'll make them all good till canceled. Make sure they're things the same time and force. And we'll go ahead and send that order in. And now you have a buy stop limit with confirmation. If it goes up and triggers that, it'll buy, and it will put the stop loss in. The stop loss technically doesn't exist until the buy order gets filled. So if that gets filled, then you'll have the stop loss kick in, and if the price were to then turn in reverse, it would stop you out with a stop market order, and you can literally set this trade up and forget it, and what we're really hoping is that the price takes off and it runs up, you know, a nice little swing cycle and it hits our target out here towards 95 and we, you know, we get at least a one and a half, 1 1.5 or, you know, two to one reward to risk ratio that makes us happy as a trader.